Hello and good evening. This is the second part of the video blog, my daily video blog for the 28th of November 2016. My name is Matthew James. How is everybody this evening? I've sort of, do you like the, the spooky background? I've still got the, the dodgy glasses, but how about the spooky glass, the background, hey, with the, with the strange lighting? It is evening here in Canberra. It is still probably about 20 eight degrees and around there's me with two layers on so there you go now i have a few things that i do actually want to um, discuss um in this particular blog i do actually have a bit of an agenda yes i've actually scribbled a few things down that i do actually want to talk about and in this particular blog and i'm not going to bore you with hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of, of of speaking with my with my um, UK accent, I will um, I will endeavour to, and I'm just moving the camera. Just bear with me. And if you hear Dino barking in the background, my apologies. It just proves that um, he does make a lot of noise. Now um, I do want to actually discuss um, the Facebook winner. I do want to announce the Facebook winner of the the free reading. Um, I do want to talk about the forthcoming Go Festival. If I've got time, I want to actually announce um, the readings that I'm doing in the Riverina and in Adelaide. I will be doing um, readings and also a meditation. It's a meditation class on the Kabbalah and creative visualization. If I get round to that, I will mention that. But I also want to discuss today's totem animal, which is the Kestrel. I also have a few issues that I do want to actually talk about. I mentioned in the other video about self-esteem and this 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 um, thing that really peed me off um, this morning when I was hearing on the car radio that um, a well-known psychic uh, was being belittled um, for some filming and he was seemed to have very low self-esteem and it seemed to um, be something that this radio presenter took real pleasure in talking about and um, belittling us psychics. Then I want to actually talk on the theme of us psychics. What is a psychic? What goes on in here? What is it that I am picking up on you guys when I actually talk to you um, face to face or on the phone or via Skype or even in email readings? I just want to just determine exactly what a psychic is. Now, okay, without further ado, um, I just want to just flip over to Facebook. Forgive me if I'm going to be walk I'm going to be sideways here, but um, I do have. Um, my Facebook page open. I do have the computer here now. Um, the winner in question um, is response is in in response to um, the offer. When I was trying to get people to actually comment on my page early in the week, and I said if I got over 100 comments, then I would offer a free reading. Well, I've actually got. Um, plenty of comments and I did nail it down to, to five people. Um, there was Pauline Izzard, there was Karen Bennett, there was Robin Hinson, there was Sharon Dean and there was Melissa Angus and anybody who's been watching me on my Facebook page, my Matthew James Medium page, will know that I actually said it is the odd one out who is the winner and I put no A's. Now, two, I think one person actually cottoned on what I was going on about. Now, what I was actually refer referring to was that Pauline Izzard is not the winner because she's got an A in Pauline and she's got an A in Izzard. Melissa Angus isn't the winner because she's got A in Melissa, she's got A in Angus. Karen Bennett isn't the winner because she's got an A in Karen. Sharon Dean isn't the, win isn't the winner because she's got an A in Sharon and she's got an A in Dean. So the odd one out and the winner of the 30 minute um, free reading with me, Matthew James, celebrity TV psychic, uh, Matthew James, I hate that tag, but that's what technically I am because I am on national Australian TV. So therefore um, by, by that means alone, I am a, 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 a TV celebrity and uh, I say that with a little bit of disdain because it's the last thing I actually really want to um, advertise but anyway Robin Hinson you are the winner of the reading with me and if you could um, if you're watching this and it has been announced on Facebook as well if you could make um, contact with me via PM on Matthew James Medium 
then I will um, organise that reading for you. Now, also on Facebook, um, uh, right towards the top, um, there's an announcement that next weekend, um, well, actually, it's the 6th and the 7th of February, which is this forthcoming weekend, um, I'm going to be at the Gold Festival in Melbourne. Um, it's two days of face-to-face -face readings. I'm going to be in the Psychic Zone. Um, and I'm going to be doing a Saturday night platform show as well. Now there are free entry tickets available. And if you go on to my Matthew James Medium and page um, and actually see it, there is actually a link to the events page and there is information on how to actually claim these free tickets. Um, on the Matthew James Medium page, it is actually under the runes, facts and history about Odin's secret article. And it is above the top five who go into the draw and it was published about 12 hours ago. So anybody interested in going to the Gold Festival um, and having a reading with me, if you're in the Melbourne area, and forgive me swinging on, on this chair, it's just, it is not particularly a, a comfortable position for me to, to actually sit. I do actually have sciatica and I'm actually feeling it at the moment. But uh, yeah, anybody in Melbourne who wants a one-to-one -one reading with me, who wants to actually see me live doing shamanic mediumship, um, which incidentally is a fusion of the traditional mediumship, which is where I will uh, link with the spirit world, I will get grandparents, I'll get mothers, I'll get fathers, um, I will get those connections and there'll be laughter, there'll be mirth, there'll be funny connections, I, I get swearing with parrots, um, I get um, sheep called Rosemary and cow called Angus, I get all sorts of, I get tortoises, you name it, I get all sorts of really um, silly, weird and wacky connections from the other side. Um, and then there's the shamanic mediumship and shamanic mediumship is more the traditional Celtic law, L-O-R-E. I will work with symbology, I work with totem animals, I will work, I will explain exactly what the, the shamanic side of my work is. That's my live show on the Saturday night, so I can tick that one off. Now, anybody who saw the, um, the first part of today's daily blog will know that I was up in the Arambi Hills in Canberra, um, and I did say that today's totem animal was going to be the kestrel, the Nanking kestrel. Um, but I've got a particular soft spot for these kestrels um, at this moment in time because um, about oh, nine, eight, nine times out of ten when I go up onto the Arambi Hills in, in Canberra there is always one or more kestrels that are, um, are around me. And I have got a proliferation and that's a really big word for... 20 past nine in the evening uh, from somebody who's actually going to be on Psychic TV as an at home this evening at 11 o'clock till 2 a.m. Um, a proliferation of kestrel photos and I have got this soft spot for, for kestrels so um, I am going to have today's totem animal as a kestrel and I've already put um, an article up on Facebook about the kestrel totem animal. Um, it is not um, on my public figure page, maybe it should be on my public figure page. And I'm going over to my Matthew James one, and I'm just going to share it onto my public figure page right now. Just bear with me a second. This is how's this for for live as we speak action on Facebook. There's the Matthew James medium. There we go. So it's now on the Matthew James medium page, and I'm actually doing this without these silly glasses. Now, what I've summarized for um, the Nanking Kestrel as a power animal, and you'll see um, a photograph that I actually took today of um, a Nanking Kestrel, and my um, summary of the, the, the attributes of um, a Kestrel being a power animal is certainly the strengthening of um, mental agility. It's all about using the mental mental channels, it's the power of thought and thinking and reasoning um, going through the thought processes. So it's all about mental concentration, being able to really hold focus on, on a situation, just like a, when you see a Nanking Kestrel in nature, it will stare right at you, it will concentrate right at you, we will give you eye contact and it really concentrates on um, the, the strata around it. Indeed, it has a very big territory and 
whenever I, in particular, and I know other people have explained this as well, go into the territory of a Kestrel, they will come and check you out. They will see what is in their territory. So that is part of the mental concentration and setting the boundaries and being aware of what your boundaries are and what your territory is, what your mental territory is. There's also the accuracy of movement. Although the, the Kestrels are one of the smallest raptors or birds of prey, they are one of the quickest, they are the, one of the most attractive ones, they are one of the ones with a distinctive um, flight pattern and their movement is very accurate, it is very precise. They also um, teach the art of patience. Now patience is a huge virtue when it actually comes to the psychic, the psychic side, the psychic, the psychic field, because you do have to be patient in quite a number of ways. And then um, the final thing I've actually put on this um, little summary that I've done, it's all about precise action, precision in your actions, your direct actions, making a decision, being very precise with it, um, going for it. Because when you see a Nankin Castrol hunt, it just strikes, it drops out the sky and bang, it's got its prey and it's back up again. That is the precision um, of action, the precise action. Now I'm going over to my blog, which is a light in the darkness. Um, I'm having to put my um, cranky glasses on and I think for the rest of the duration of this, I'm going to put them that way around and uh, if they will stay on. No, they won't stay on that way. Damn. I was, I was hoping people would then be able to actually have a bit of a laugh instead of hearing my dulcet tones. So I'm going to actually put them on that way. And I can still read through them, but I am just um, trying to just add a little bit of character this, to this, um, what could be a rather mundane um, blog. But mara-gamiel.blogspot.com.au. So mara as in M-A-R-A dash. Gamiel, which is G-A-M-I-E-L, blogspot.com.au. That is my blog. I've had this blog since about 2006, October 2006. And it's all really, it was a personal journal of everything of the hidden world of the occult. Um, I've really kept it going. And I know um, people are going to be asking me, what is Mara Gamiel? It is actually the camel of the mystic sea. Now that is the um, Kabbalah title that I I was given um, when I work on the inner planes. Um, Mara is the great sea, the great sea of Binar. Um, Binar being one of the Sephiroth of the Kabbalah. Um, it is actually from men memory if I can get this right. Um, Binar is not Saturn. I can't remember now what 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 be what what planet Binar is because my my memory is particularly poor um, when I actually think about things specifically. Um, it is about it's the insulin. It is a bit of a bit of memory loss that I do have. But Gamiel means camel, so it's camel of the mystic sea, and the realm is actually Binar, like I say, which is. Um, which is sort of the realm where I, I sort of function. I, um, the idea of a camel is it can survive in the harsh desert. It can actually survive in the harshness of the desert and thrive. And it can carry, it can actually carry passengers. And that's basically what I do when I do my Kabbalah work. I do actually carry um, passengers and I do go across um, these rather harsh lands in the Kabbalah. So that's why I call myself or I have been given the name, I should say, the title of Mara Gamiel. Now, the entry for today um, is a Kestrel Totem Animal. And what actually um, I put here, and I don't really want to read it word for word because I'd rather you guys just sort of um, dig it out. I just want to just summarize um, what the Kestrel is all about. The Kestrel being a bird that um, stimulates a quick, graceful and agile mind. Um, it will teach you how to use your mental facilities more effectively and more patiently to capture what you need and desire. So it's really all about training those mental agilities, those existing mental agilities and really, cha really changing the way that you're thinking and changing um, your perception. I'm all about changing perceptions because if we're stuck in the same mold, same way of thought, the same perception, we don't actually go 
anywhere. We go round and round in the same circle, a little bit like um, um, a fly that's had its its wings broken. So it's like a whizzing round and round and round like that. It's the blue arse fly, so they say. Now, I've never seen a blue arse fly myself, but I actually hear, I do actually hear that they spin and they go round and round on their back. And it's, it's the dying fly. That's the sort of the action that we do. Uh, without actually changing our perceptions. So Kestrel um, is symbology. Bear with me a second. Wow. Apologies for that. This is the, this is um, this is welcome to the world of Matthew James. Here we are at 25 past nine at night, and I'm getting clients trying to ring me and people trying to ring me at this time. This is this is sort of standard for me. But as we were saying, it's all about changing perception, and, and the Kestrel. Um, is one such um, creature that can teach us that um, ability because the idea with symbology is, is that we are all one, we're all one consciousness, we're all one great mind, we're all one great hologram and when these particular fantastic creatures come into our lives it is supposed to impress on us that part of the universe or part of nature is giving us part of its, um, its perceptions, its energy its attention and it is actually unlocking that part of us within us so by seeing the kestrel as a power animal it is an animal that actually works with us whereas a totem animal or the animals that are around us a power animal is particularly an animal that you see on a regular basis that you actually you, you take note of the symbology you actually work with on the on a mental and emotional level and you do actually share um, a telepathy with a little bit like um, the witch is familiar and because these kestrels and one particular cast one kestrel in particular is around me so much I deem it as one of my power animals and I actually note note the symbology of the of the um, I'm going to say as the Kestrel at this moment in time. Um, not only has the Kestrel got excellent, excellent vision, but its hearing is amazing, absolutely amazing. It's got fantastic, so fantastic hearing. So what the Kestrel is all about is, is it reminds us to truly listen and see what is around us within our lives and our place and responsibility within the situation text again just ignore the background noises um, right so I'm just gonna I'm just been basically sim, um, summarizing the the, the Kestrel um, it teaches us control of speed and movement it teaches us patience as well as quick thinking survival of self and family it teaches us observation and keen awareness um, and size does not matter to constitute strength Here's skinny little me. Here's the perfect symbology. I kind of represent the little kestrel in the world of the big hawks and the big buzzards and the big eagles and the big ospreys and this tiny little skinny me. And yeah, uh, it's a perfect, it's a perfect power animal to actually epitomise myself. So on that, I just want to move on to this self-esteem thing this what really peed me off um, this particular particularly this morning um, I'd arrived I'd arrived um, at the bottom of the Urambi Hills and I'm setting myself up to go for a walk and there's this silly silly uh, presenter um, it was um, a commentary about some kind of recording that she'd watched some kind of video that she'd watched the well-known Australian psychic I mean he's very well known he's on breakfast time and he's here there and everywhere I personally know this guy and he has anything but low self-esteem but she was criticizing him in this particular recording for having low self-esteem and he, she was saying that because he's got low self-esteem so it must um, it must be because of the, the thing that he actually deals with and, and, and working in the psychic field and it mu it's presenting a, a very poor uh, example of esteem to the people in the audience and she was just basically waffling on and waffling on and waffling on about 
what she's trying to say was if you're a psychic you have low self-esteem because it's all about being a confidence trickster and how can you have high self-esteem when you're basically ripping people off and you know damn well that you're ripping people off that was what she was trying to say and this is why I was getting on my high horse because she knows jack shit about being a psychic she knows jack shit about the, the, the honesty and the integrity that so many of us have and I was quite offended because um, just because she might not believe in psychics and just because she can't understand how a psychic works it does not mean that psychicness doesn't exist it might not be in her life and she might have not found the proof and she might have had a bad experience but she should not be impressing this opinion and this opinionated crap on the listeners on the radio show and thank goodness and I say thank goodness this is about quarter seven in the morning now you're listening to me presenter shame on you for actually saying this about a friend of mine I have got very high self-esteem I believe in myself I believe in what I do it's the only way I can actually work as a psychic as a medium because you're dealing with the impossible you are dealing with a situation where you've got to entertain an audience without a script. You're standing in front of an audience and basically when you stand up, you have nothing and you have all these eyes on you. Um, so many people can be in that audience willing you to fail. You've got to have self, high self-esteem to be able to pull off a performance and a consistency again and again and again. And again, when you actually understand what a psychic is, and she clearly is very narrow-minded, and she thinks it's mind-reading, and she thinks it's, it's confidence tricks, tri tricking, she thinks it's cold reading, she obviously doesn't believe in us, then, well, that's fine. You, you just tootle off into your little world of narrow-mindedness and ignorance, and you just, just tootle off there. Do you think I give a damn? No, I've been in this industry since 1986, and I... I know how this mechanism works. I've studied psychology. I've been there. I've done it. And I'm on my high horse because I'm sick and tired of people saying, just because there's a few charlatans out there, and there are charlatans out there, there are call readers out there, don't tar us all with the same brush. Psychic comes from psyche, which means self or understanding self. A psychic is somebody who can step out of themselves and understand the person in front of them. They can step out of themselves and know what the person in front of them is thinking, feeling, sensing, hearing, tasting, going through in their lives what they've gone through in their lives. And in that sense, we are a counsellor, we're an intuitive counsellor because we can actually help and aid that individual, especially if we've had the experiences or similar experiences to what the person in front of her is going through because we understand where they're coming from, we can empathize with them, we can help them. Now that is what a basic psychic is. It isn't a mind reader. I know a lot of psychics use tarot cards, they use runes, they use numerology, they use palm reading, they use teacup reading, they use all these different divination tools, but it's not necessarily psychic ability that they're using. Psychic is from self, meaning self, which is effectively, when I'm looking at a person like you, and I am doing any form of reading, I am understanding you by having compassion and empathy for you, and I am be I become you to understand you, and that is how I read people. Now, obviously, we have the terms clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, um, claircognizance, um, clairgustance, clairalliance. We have medium, we have physical medium, we have trans medium. They aren't psychic. Psychic is just having the ESP and the extrasensory perception to understand the person in front of you. Now, you can be a medium and not a psychic, but you can't, you, do you understand me? You don't have to have psychic ability to receive information from the other side because it's a faculty of the mind or something of the mind that has been activated where you're receiving information from 
from elsewhere. You are not receiving the information from the person in front of you, so how can it be psychic ability? Equally, clairvoyance, and I'm going to turn clairvoyance in this category, which takes all the clairs into consideration, isn't psychic ability because clairvoyance, okay, so you're getting information about a person and you are foreseeing someone's future, clairvoyance. Clair audience, you're receiving information from an external source, which is, is actually, you see, the clairs are what we call mental mediumship. It's going on within the mind and it is, uh, it is all part and parcel of what is in the medium's mind or in the clairvoyant's mind. It's not necessarily a psychic connection. It's, it's not more than a psychic. It isn't a greater thing to be a clairvoyant than a psychic. I mean, so many psychics are clairvoyant and are a medium as well, but you don't necessarily have to be a medium or a psychic to be a clairvoyant. Um, clairvoyant is activating the, the faculties in the mind, particularly the pineal and the pituitary gland areas that are extremely active. And the, 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 I will say the endocrine system is alive. Do you want to call it the chakras? Fine. I don't, I don't necessarily acknowledge the chakras, but there is um, a high vibrational energy that courses through your body. It makes a journey through, the, through the, the, the spine. We call it the kundalini. That is what clairvoyance and all these rely on, that life force energy. It is a faculty that we are able to see a person's past, present, and future. Um, we're able to communicate with spirit, but being clairaudient does not make you a medium. You are receiving information a little bit like a download or a little bit like an answer machine. You hear it afterwards. You are not necessarily doing a two-way conversation. Now, mediumship is a two-way conversation. You've used these faculties to make a connection, particularly the clairs, not the psychic, but the clairs. You then connect to the person on the other side, like an actual telephone. A medium is a telephone. It's a two-way conversation. You will hear, sense, feel. I mean, I get all the feelings of the person that passed. I will sense them. I will sense them. Um, I will sense what they're saying. And I will hear them and I sometimes see them. But they will give me information as a download. I will then make a contact with them, we then get a two-way conversation. Mediumship is when we have that two-way conversation. I just wanted to make that perfectly clear to anybody out there who thinks that all of it is psychic. This is why when you have somebody has to tag psychic medium, it can be very, very misleading because psychic and medium are two entirely different things. But on the big picture, it's all about telepathy. It's all about us being telepathic. And you only have to look at the ants, the bees, the birds, the horses, um, the chimpanzees, the dogs, the cats. They're all telepathic, yet they technically have the same DNA as us, but a little bit different. So if all these animals are telepathic and they have the faculty to be telepathic and see through the dimensions. I mean, you can't tell a cat or a dog there's no such things as ghosts yet. How many of you have cats and dogs? And I'll put my hand up with both a cat and a dog that sees something in the room, sees the same entity in the corner of the room as you do. But hang on a minute. I've been to school and I'm told that there's no such thing as life after death. And I'm told that there's no such thing as ghosts. But I don't remember there being a cat and dog school to actually teach cats and dogs there's no such things as ghosts. So they see something that is there. They have the same DNA as us. But the difference is they've not gone through this stupid, mindless education system that we go through, the stupid religion that we have on this planet. All the things, all the scientists, all the, I'm going to swear, wankers out there who try and switch off that facility. That facility is natural. It's within our DNA. We're all telepathic. Now, we are telepathic with consciousness. And I'm saying consciousness because we're consciousness within the human body. When you leave this physical plane, you are consciousness within other bodies because on higher levels, you're still in a physical body. You're a consciousness. Telepathy is communication from one consciousness 
to another consciousness. It doesn't matter where you are in the universe. Once you once you realize that, you can communicate with anywhere in the universe. And the universe isn't way, 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 way out there like science would science would have us believe. You only have to look at, for example, that that's made of atoms, right? It appears to be solid, right? But we all will know that when the spatial um, dimensions of the atom are impossible. They're absolutely impossible. So everything about the universe being out there, what happens if we're inside an atom? What happens if we're inside an, inside an atom that's within a table or a chair or we're, in, we're inside the atom of a great mind of a being? We don't know. I mean, this is, this is, this is the thing. We, we have got this science that is misleading us by a misrep this misrepresentation um, purely and simply through fear. Um, through control. So, I mean, that's another subject in itself. I do tend to go off on little little tangents. So, I'm actually going to draw this evening's um, part two and three of this blog, um, daily blog, to a close. Um, you've been um, watching, I hope, watching um, Matthew James. And thank you so much for listening and watch out for the next and the next and the next. Bye for